Okay, let's talk about equipment. Um, uh, it is the number one question I get asked in my videos is what camera are you using, what mic are you using, what, hold, what uh, camera holder are you using, that type of thing. Uh, so people are always asking me about equipment, so I wanted to make a video on that. Uh, and the first disclaimer I'll make is that I'm no expert when it comes to audio video equipment. Um, I just learn through trial and error uh, a couple of years of doing YouTube videos and buying tons and tons of equipment and trialing it and looking at how other people do things when I look at professional quality videos and think, mm, how do they do that and trying to mimic that. Um, so yeah, there, there's probably much better ways of doing things than the way I do it, but I wanted to share with you uh, uh, how I did it and the things that I've learned. That said, I was in the audio video club when I was in high school. Um, believe it or not, I joined that club to meet girls. <laughs> there were no girls. <laughs> there were also no girls in the chess club, but hmm, what are you going to do? The second disclaimer I'd like to give is that production quality, while important, is not the have-all and end-all of YouTube videos. You know, if you are as charming as hell and you have amazing content, you do incredible things every day, or you have a skill that no one else has, uh, then people are going to watch your videos no matter how poor the production quality. That said, production quality is becoming more and more important on YouTube. And if you're just starting out on YouTube, uh, people notice straight away if your production quality is low and they just don't watch. So for those of you that are wanting to get into YouTube um, and making YouTube videos, you need to really focus on your production quality, otherwise you're just never going to get the traction. Uh, and I've noticed that uh, the big YouTubers, they definitely focus on production quality. Um, and, it's, and it's become very important to them that the, the video is sharp, the sound quality is high, and the lighting is correct, and the editing is very sharp. Uh, and for professional um, production crews, you know, people that have a sound person and multiple cameras and so forth, you know, we would all like to get to that point, but of course, uh, for most YouTubers, we're a one-man band, and so the key is getting as much automation to do all those things for you as you can, because we can't all be good at everything. If you're good at presenting, you might not be very good with lighting or sound or editing or any of the other things that go into making a video. So you want to try and get work with the very best quality uh, raw material as you can, because the end product will always be better. If you've got out of focus or blurry video and poor sound, no amount of editing is going to fix that. Anyway, on with some of the equipment that I use. Um, first off, let's talk about cameras. Uh, the thing I'd say about cameras is that if you're using a, uh, a, a camcorder, you might want to consider moving to a uh, SLR. An SLR, what I'm talking about is um, really the still cameras that have really been designed for years and years around taking photographs are now turning into decent video cameras. And if you look at the professionals and at the very popular YouTubers, they all use SLRs, and there's a good reason for that. Um, camcorders, and I have spent so much money on trying to make camcorders work for me. I have bought some of the fanciest camcorders, and you can always tell the quality is lower. They, have a, they often have a very small sensor, they have lower quality glass in their lenses, and you know, camcorders are, are super easy to use and they have lovely auto focusing and the, the sound is often pretty good and they're pretty tempting to use. But you, I can tell straight away, and I'm sure most people can tell straight away, when someone is using a camcorder. No matter how good the camcorder is, uh, it's never going to come up to the quality of a, of a SLR. Uh, that said, SLRs are, are expensive and they're difficult to use. Um, they were primarily, as I said, designed for photography, not for video work. Um, and so it's not until the most recent models of SLRs that we've started to get some of the features, uh, like autofocus and so forth, that we took for granted with camcorders. So my first bit of advice is to step away from the camcorder. Um, as far as I'm aware, there are just no really good camcorders on the market. And I've, you know, even three or four thousand dollar camcorders don't match up to the quality of an SLR. That said, uh, what type of SLR should you recommend? Or should I recommend? Um, I've noticed that uh, the, the professionals almost always use Canon. Um, Canon is considered the leader when it comes to uh, quality within the video market. Uh, some people still use Nikon, some people use uh, Panasonic and many of the others. I also have a Panasonic, a, a GH4. 
Uh, when I'm making car videos, I use my GH4 um, in the car facing me. Uh, I mount it to the windscreen and have it this way. What I love about the GH4 is uh, it has an excellent autofocusing system and it's very good at managing exposure, uh, a lot better than the Canon. Uh, and it's a little cheaper than the top of the line Canons and of course being a Panasonic you can share the lenses with Olympus and a couple of other brands as well. The main problem I have with my Panasonic or Olympus and I found this with Sony cameras as well and a little bit from Nikon and I'm no expert in this um, but certainly this camera even on its highest quality when I take video with it it looks amazing on my computer once I'm processing it and editing it and once I've got the video all finished it looks amazing but once I upload that footage to YouTube and YouTube processes it it gets messed up uh, I don't know what it is about uh, Panasonic cameras and a lot of the other brands that YouTube just doesn't process the, the the raw material the same way I don't have that problem with Canon cameras Canon cameras always process perfectly and here's an example of that I drove with these two cameras down the road today and here's a, here's a shot side by side of the result of that and you can see the blockiness from the camera on the left which is the Panasonic GH4 compared to the uh, the, sh the crispness of the of the of the Canon. Um, now the problem with the Canon of course is that it has problems uh, managing light exposure um, especially when there's bright light behind it it, it always um, tends to go to that bright light and, and underexpose everything else in the picture whereas certainly I've found Sony's and Panasonic's do a lot better job of that so no camera's perfect. So my very favorite camera for YouTubing at the moment is the Canon 80D and uh, I think a lot of other YouTubers use this as well. The big YouTubers seem to use the ADD and it seems to be their favorite. Uh, the features the ADD have over the 70D and some of the lesser cameras, including all the Rebel cameras, uh, is that it can do 60 frames per second and it has the new um, focusing system in it. Um, the other, other top of the line video camera that's available from Canon is the new 5D Mark IV. It can do all the same features that the ADD can do but it's a full frame camera. Um, the, the actual advantage of having the ADD over the 5D Mark IV is that the ADD can take um, the EFS lenses, the cheaper EFS lenses. Now EFS lenses are great lenses because they're cheaper uh, and they, they pretty much cover the same focal distance as their more expensive L lenses. Um, and well, L lenses are fantastic for still photography. Uh, these EFS lenses are perfectly fine for video. Uh, you know, they're only average for still photography, but for video, they're fantastic. You know, this, this lens that I've got on here that I use all the time, which is a 10 to 18, is only $270, I think. Um, the camera itself is a lot more expensive, but you can put this lens on a three or $400 body, and you've got the whole setup for under $1,000. So if you can afford a Canon uh, SLR, that's a good place to start. So the other camera that I use a lot of, of course, is GoPros. Uh, GoPros are excellent cameras in that the quality is high, the sound quality, especially if you have an external mic on them, is very high, uh, and the batteries last a long time. Uh, the downside, of course, to the GoPro is that it is a fixed, super wide angle lens. So there's limited uses for GoPro. You know, you can't be zooming in with a GoPro. Uh, you can't even really be using a GoPro uh, for video blogging type of thing. It, it distorts people's facial features too much. But for small spots and for having cameras around you to capture, capture other angles, like I'm using in this video, I'm using a camera above me and a camera beside me with GoPros, just gives people another angle to look at your work. Um, one thing I recommend with GoPros is to avoid GoPro accessories. You know, the GoPro cameras are great, but the accessories that GoPro actually sell are often pretty poor. And not all of them, some of them are pretty good, but uh, if you can avoid using the cases that come with GoPros, I would recommend it. The, the quality of the glass or the plastic in the cases is not high and it actually deteriorates the quality of the GoPro. Um, so if you can get a third party case, you know, like a frame like this where the GoPro just slips in and you get the, the, the straight GoPro, you get a much higher quality um, shot. Obviously you don't want to be doing that if you're going underwater or you're putting the GoPro in any position where it could be damaged, you'd put it in the hard case then. But if you're inside or inside a car or somewhere where uh, the GoPro is not going to be damaged then put it in uh, just a, a frame case. Another thing is that because the GoPro has such a wide-angle lens 
it tends to be a victim of flare a lot. And what I mean by flare is light coming in from the sun or other light sources, of course, are hitting that lens and causing um, problems with flare and um, contrast. So where if you can, if you can buy not just a frame, but a frame that has a hood on it that protects the GoPro from flare from above and below, that makes a big difference and allows the GoPro to be used a lot more angles as well. So that's using the GoPro. You know, the GoPro, um, the biggest downside of the GoPro is the poor quality of the sound from the internal microphones. Uh, and that can be fixed simply by putting an external microphone on it, which is easy enough to do. Uh, next thing is mounting with a GoPro or mounting with other cameras. Uh, once again, I strongly recommend against using GoPro's own mounting system. It is terrible. Um, you get these little stack things. Obviously, you don't normally have it this high. But the problem with them is, is they, don't, uh, they tend to take any vibration and exaggerate it. And they're awkward to use. You know, if you're on a certain angle, you, you just have to keep stacking these stupid little things on. Because if you get a third-party mount, uh, say one of these from Panavise or I think what's the other brand that I have? Uh, anyway, I'm putting all the bits and pieces I'm talking about here, uh, links to it in the, uh, in the description below. But, but a third party brand like this, which is a single suction cup, and then you have two adjustable um, uh, like knuckles, uh, you can adjust the camera to any angle, and then you just tighten it up, and it's a very solid, um, it's a very solid mount that then um, seems to um, instead of taking any vibration and, and exaggerating it, it seems to t become a bit of a shock absorber. Um, so yeah, if you can get a third party mount for your GoPro, uh, you'll, you'll have a lot better um, time with the GoPros. A lot of people ask me how I mount my cameras in cars and so forth. I use these Matthews, what are they, uh, BH20s uh, with a suction cup. Um, they are amazing. Um, they're so much better than a lot of other third party products. They're a little pricey. Um, but yeah, once you, they, can, they can swivel to any angle, but they really absorb a lot of the vibrations as well, and um, they take up a lot less room. What I strongly recommend against is getting these silly looking things that you can get off Amazon and so forth. Um, they don't really help with the vibration, and they take up so much room and end up uh, not being that strong anyway. So spend a little bit more money and get a decent mount for your SLR. Uh, or as I said with the GoPros, third party GoPro amount uh, makes life so much easier. When I'm mounting on a car, uh, when I'm not mounting on the inside, I'm mounting on the outside, I tend to mount with multiple, uh, have, have the camera base mounted and then I lock it in with a second mount or a third mount. And you can buy these kits that once the, the camera's on the car, you can then steady it and, safe, and make it a little safer by putting another mount on the hot shoe. Mounts along the top here. And just, uh, it gives the, um, steadies the camera just so much more and it gives you a little bit more uh, hope of holding onto the camera <laughs> if the suction mount uh, fails. Um, they actually, when you buy these kits, they come with a three-way mount. I believe two ways is more than enough. Uh, and you can see where I'm mounting it here on my Golf. Uh, I often do this for these external shots, which end up looking really um, effective. Okay, on to sound. Sound is sadly overlooked by most YouTubers, and I have so many problems with sound in so many of my videos, despite all my efforts. Uh, but I'm getting better, I'm getting better, I'm learning every time. Every single video I make, I try and improve on the previous video and I try something new. But sound has been, always been a big problem for me. I always screw up on sound. Um, Really, at the end of the day, uh, the only way to capture decent sound is to have a microphone close to you, whether it's a lavalier like I've got on myself here, uh, and, and you can either have that into your, into your GoPro or into, into your SLR, um, or if you must have an external mic, then get a decent quality mic, like a road mic, uh, with, a, with a fluffy thing on it to capture it, stop the wind noise. Um, this, these do a great job of capturing um, capturing sound as long as the camera is fairly close to you but you'll get a lot more ambient sound with these uh, really to, to clear that ambient sound you really need a lavalier mic and if you're going to be far away from the camera then you need to invest in um, some sort of uh, radio system that allows you to mount uh, a transmitter 
on yourself and a receiver on the camera, um, then they're not that expensive anymore. I've got a couple of them, four or five hundred dollars, I think. Um, they make a big difference to your production quality. As for walking around with a camera, well, um, there's lots of different solutions for that. If it's a small camera, then uh, one of these three axis gimbals, which are now, I think, like $100. Uh, this one's a pretty cheap one. I'll try and put the link below on this one. I love this one. Uh, it works well for me. I've tried all sorts of others. Um, but yeah, w once you turn it on, it just stabilizes the camera like that. And when you're walking along, it smooths it out so it looks like you're flying and it, and it makes such a big difference to how your video comes out and you're not jerking all over the place. But that's for a small camera like a GoPro. Once you start getting to bigger cameras, um, you start getting a bit more expensive. And uh, what a lot of YouTubers use is they use a, uh, like a glide cam, which is a, a weight which balances out um, the weight of the camera with the weights on the bottom and allows you to smooth out um, when you're walking along. I've had mixed results with these. Um, I had, I've used this, this one for about a year and I've never really mastered it, but I've seen a lot of YouTubers have m amazing results with those. And they are anywhere between $100 and $500 for a decent glide cam. If you've got the money, oh, too wee shush. If you've got the money, um, you want to get a proper three axis gimbal for your um, Tui. A three axis gimbal for your uh, DSLR. Um, this one from DJI will hold. Uh, medium sized DSLRs and you'll see me walking around cars and so forth with this one. It's excellent but it's expensive. It's over a thousand dollars. If you can afford it, I strongly recommend it. What I do not recommend is this horrible thing. Uh, this is the DJI Osmo which a lot of people love. Um, I hate it and I've had terrible results with it every single time. And DJI have actually replaced mine because they know I hate mine and I still hate it. Um, the reason I hate it is primarily because the sound quality on it is terrible. They've, um, they've put out a couple of patches for the sound quality and they've even given everybody an external mic for them. But even if you put a nice high quality lavalier mic on these, the sound quality is still terrible. And I'm not that wild about the picture quality either. Uh, one thing is they're certainly a little sharper than a GoPro but the, the lens angle isn't as wide as a GoPro, so they're less useful to me. And they seem to either under or overexpose, and the saturation on the color is always just a little off for me. So I've stopped using this horrible thing, and it's expensive, which is a shame. And, you know, it's nice. It's got all sorts of controls, and you can see what you're looking at. You can put your phone here. The theory is good. I just hope that the next generation works better than the current one because I just can't stand it. So that's it. I didn't want to go into every single piece of equipment that I have. I just wanted to give a general overview of what I use in my videos. Um, you know, production quality is important, but really content is the number one driver for people watching your videos. If you can afford to get an SLR and a decent microphone, then you're well on the way to making high quality videos. Uh, after that, you just need to build up your bits and pieces uh, as you can afford it. So I wish you all the best with making videos on YouTube and if you've got any questions put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching everyone.